Yes. Well, the anatomy of the whale, of course, is um, very similar to a, a, a man's in general organs that they've got. They haven't got any back legs or, or pelvis, but they've got pretty well everything else. But it's all in different proportions. And the, the obvious thing with the sperm whale is the enormous head it has. It can be a third of uh, um, the length of the whole whale in a big whale. The, the, the head gets bigger in proportion as it grows. And uh, most of this head, uh, actually this grey area here is bone. This is the skull cut right through the centre. So the skull is a big sort of cup here and in it sits the nose and the nose is enormous if you like to call this the nose some people call it the forehead but this is really the nose structure and uh, two uh, tubes go through it one to the lungs which comes out from the picture here and goes back in here and goes straight takes air to the lungs and the other is a big uh, passage that comes and it flattens out here and this probably blows up into a big tube um, perhaps uh, more than uh, a third, two, two thirds of a metre uh, in diameter. And uh, this probably takes water in. Uh, it may not, it might, it, might take, um, it might take air in. I think it takes both actually, and I've found evidence of, of water in there. And uh, there is certainly a reason for it to take air, because if it takes air in here, into this area, then it can blow, blow it through a little slit here. Well, I say a little slit actually, in a big whale it'll be that across, uh, getting on from metre across, and it's just like very tight lips, right, like that, and it, and it makes its sound by blowing air through it. So um, that's the reason I'm sure there's air in it. Um, there's also, it, it gets air into the back here because um, there's a, a, an incredible screen here. Uh, it uh, takes air in and there are little knobs so that if the pressure comes on, a net, it makes the net work. And that air would reflect sound. So sound that's made there would come down here. There's a sort of channel for sound here hit that and then come down here and come out of its nose and uh, that sound by anybody uh, recording it would be a second sound so if a click was made here it would go click that click would go straight out to the microphone you were using and the second this uh, uh, would bounce off here and the second click would come out slightly, well the same click but, but slightly delayed reception so you get a reflected one as well and we don't really know why it's doing that but um, the, the oil that this is full of uh, at blood temperature is liquid um, it's called spermaceti oil because the old whalers uh, we're supposed to think it was spermaceti. It looks rather like spermaceti, but, um, uh, but they, it's actually just oil. It, it's oil, but it, it's sometimes called spermaceti wax because at quite a high temperature, at 30 degrees, it solidifies. Um, so uh, the theory of buoyancy is that it will solidify that it actually can control the temperature of that. Uh, and normally it's lower, it's only just above freezing if the, whale, if the temperature's measured uh, when the whale's just surfaced from a deep dive, then uh, the temperature is about 32, 33 degrees, um, which is quite a, um, a lot below the blood temperature at 38. But it would freeze if the temperature dropped just uh, two or three degrees. 
And if it can drop it to 29 degrees, then everywhere in the world that it dives, it can match the density of the water. So that's the, that's the way it can do it. Um, and there are lots of problems with that, but it has the means to overcome them all. It can cool it by taking water into this tube, which would expand to, to that size of water, and this spermaceti would be pushed around it, sort of thing, uh, because this is three-dimensional, of course, it comes out here. And uh, so it's got the means to cool it, and then to heat it, it's got blood at uh, eight degrees more than uh, 29 and 30 degrees, so it can easily cool it, or relatively easily cool it. It's the reverse of ice, where um, if water freezes, the ice is less dense and comes up. If this freezes, it's denser, it shrinks and it goes down. And then uh, there are interesting things other than that, of course. One thing is the brain. The brain has a lot of the parts of the human brain, but um, it doesn't have, seem to have uh, a sense of uh, smell centre, but um, it's got the, the same sort of parts. And it's very unusual, um, all the cetacean brains are unusual in having a very crinkled surface like a human brain does. As animals get simpler, they have fewer of those convolutions. But the, they have a lot of convolutions, but this is probably to do with, um, uh, with sound production and use of sound, rather than just intelligence. The higher centres are probably the smaller. But the, it's the largest brain of any animal goes to about nine ki kilos and uh, the heart of course is interesting um, it, it, a whale of this size which is nine uh, um, it's 12 meters long um, the, the, the heart would be about uh, uh, did I give the weight there? I didn't. Yes, 2.5% oh, of the 50, body weight. 50 yes. kilos. Yes, I didn't want to go into the percentage. <laughs> it yeah. says 560 kilos. Yeah, 560. Half a ton. That's, that's more like it, yeah. 560 kilos, um, which is about 2.5% uh, of the body weight. And uh, so it's, it's a big, big muscular organ, which of course has lots and lots of... Uh, problems to do with how it can shift the, the, blood, pump the blood around, which is such a big volume. Um, and th this is an interesting structure. There's, there's a network of blood vessels um, between the ribs and around the, uh, around the spinal cord. And uh, that's actually got several functions. One is it, it increases the volume of blood very much, which is good for um, holding your breath a long time. Uh, and uh, it also um, is the way for blood going to the brain. And this probably cushions the brain against big changes of pulse, which might be to do with the, either the pressure it goes into or the size of the heart. So, and then the, the stomach, the stomach it has four stomachs actually. There's the first one that has very thick wall and squids go into it and uh, they, they can't use their suckers and, and uh, claws to damage it at all. So that uh, sort of keeps them for a bit. And then it comes into this big one where it's all dissolved, lots of juices are pushed onto it. And in that big one, uh, you get um, the beaks of squid uh, collect. So you can get as many as 18,000 beaks in one stomach. And that was what led me into a study of beaks. So I, I was able to identify the beaks to tell me the species of squid, but also from the size I could tell 
the weights of the different squid, so I could find the proportions of the squid that were important. And oh, this one, uh, we've got a, a baby in. There's a baby whale uh, fairly close to being born. And the, the nice thing is that the, the rectum, or the end of the gut here, this part here, um, tends to, if, if any beaks come down through the gut, which they don't usually because sperm whales vomit them, um, the beaks collect in here into a, 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 into a lump. And uh, oh, in about one in 50 whales, um, that lump can be f found. Uh, in, in the commercial days, of course, they looked for that lump because it was amber grease, uh, which people call various things, but either amber or amber grease. And this is it. It's it's um, that's getting a little bit um, a little bit of fungus growing on it, but uh, it's it has a, a wonderful smell. If I can give you this. <laughs> oh goodness me! Um, what on earth is that? What, is it useful for something? It is. Musk. Or? It's actually retained smell tremendously well, and all the very best perfumes in Paris have this in it. Right. Um, so, and it's very complex. Perfumiers have tried to. It's been analysed, and they've tried to make it, but it's too complicated to make. But it is the best thing in the world to um, add to the best sense because it keeps the smell for longest. And, and it's made by a process of whales consuming squid beaks. Yes. It's pro it, it is very complex, the chemical, but it seems to be the breakdown of the beaks that uh, makes it. And in fact, you always get beaks in it, or nearly always. Yes. One of the ways you, you know it, this actually came from the sea, it was floating north of Pico, and uh, I knew it was ambergris for sure, because it had beaks in it. Yes. And uh, the retention is another thing, if you touch that, you can smell it the next day, even though you wash several times. Um, the, the smell, it retains the smell. Mm. So there you are, and it used to be, uh, a wonderful, um, wonderful thing for buying princesses and all sorts of things. How people got to know about it, I don't know. But I've written here, let this pleasure you with its everlasting smell. Known to the ancients as 